The multiple universes of the Final Fantasy franchise are totally different from one another. Aren't they? This is Kitty and it's conspiracy time again. Today it's about the theory whether the worlds of Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy X are connected. It doesn't mean that Spira and Gaia are the same. They're still different planets, but the universe could be the same. How do we find out? I mean, many years have passed since the release of VII until this theory came up in the first place. It was triggered by the launch of the very first sequel to be in the series, Final Fantasy X-2. The Gullwings consist of three very likable girls, two all bad technology buffs and an abnormally weird kid named Shinra. Nobody can really tell whether it's a boy or a girl, but Jesus, he is a whiz kid. There is a cutscene in which Shinra philosophizes about the livestream of the planet while flying over the far plane. There would be a chance for limitless energy and creating an incredible future for Spira. Yuna's immediately on fire and dreams about a city full of lights, a city that never sleeps. Could be New York, could also be Xanarkand, but concerning the Shinra easter egg, could also be Midgar. We even have a statement of the FF7 and 10 writer Katsushige Nojima. In the Ultimania books, he indicates that the descendants of the Wizkid Shinra once found a way to travel to another planet and settle down, which was Gaia. Still between the points in time where the different storylines of 7 and 10 take place lie at least thousand years. I bet you want some more evidence. To start with, not that it was a good movie, but do you remember that in Advent Children, Sid no longer operates the high wind, but the new airship Shira, named after his wife? It is said that he didn't build it, but found it, and firstly didn't understand its technology, for it seemed to be of an ancient civilization. Physically, it does rather look like an airship from 10. The next hint can be found in the remake of Seven while walking through the huge museum of the Shinra company. There is a picture that seems quite old next to a Shinra placard. See for yourself, that mask is suspiciously similar looking to the one our Gullwings genius is wearing. Although I wonder why he would need a gas mask. Okay, lots of I'll bet wear one. It's fashionable in some way, but since they all breathe the same air as everybody else, it's somehow meaningless. Whatever, back on topic. Of course, there is a lot that can be called into question about this theory. For example, in Final Fantasy VII, the references for those spaceships whereby Shinra's descendants have arrived on Gaia are missing. Also, the photo in the museum tells us nothing about the closer procedure of the company's foundation. The guy looks like Shinra from Ten too, but how would that be possible? He would have to be hundreds of years old, maybe his descendants continue to carry a mask for some reason, but that implies that they stopped doing that at some point of time. Why would they do that? Simply breaking the mold, the more technologized Midgar was getting? It sure raises issues. At least Sephiroth vaguely turns towards the background story of the planet. He explains that the Citra, the ancient population of Gaia, have been robbed and expelled by another tribe. He doesn't go into detail. Maybe it was just another crowd of Citra people who were done with the lifestyle of the rest. Or these other people were the alien intruders from Spira which would make mankind of FF7 except for Aerith an Albad descendant. What? But Open that would eyes. mean the spiral pattern eyes got lost over generations. Ugh, too bad. As I thought. In both games, the souls of the dead are an energy form that returns to the planet once people die. Usually. Sometimes, if they're unsent, they turn into monsters in 10. Only in 10? <laughs> no. FF7 has a similar concept. 
of unsent souls that goes back to Japanese mythology. The word Shinen Tai, which is an unredeemed materialized soul, doesn't appear in the game, but some cases in the plot refer to this phenomenon. For example, you fight the ghost monsters of the G or Jai tribe in Cosmo Canyon. And the old Sitra in the ancient temple is one of these restless souls too. It can be compared with the revenants of Western mythology because these ghosts always appear in their former body. The Shinan Tai can materialize in any form. That's exactly what happened to Sephiroth after his death. His soul split into three parts after Cloud had defeated him the first time. His anger was so big, he refused returning to the livestream. Luz, Kadaj, and Yazu are the pathetical remains of his hate-filled soul. In FF10, the redeemed souls are being sent to the Far Plane, a place similar to the Promised Land of Seven. The pyre flies during his sending ritual remind me of his dream. And since Shinra from 10.2 has been talking about a way to gain energy from these souls, there is no doubt that both planets share the mystery about a Mako core and its energy. Unlike the conjecture about FF7 and 9 taking place on the same planet, because they're both named Gaia, the suggestions over connection between Spira and Gaia are founded and definitely worth a spin-off game. Hence, I consider the connection theory between Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy X to be true. Turn in when I say again, it's conspiracy time. <laughs>